Chapter 4, Section 5, Multiplying Polynomials. Now, because there are different kinds of polynomials, when we multiply two polynomials together, it's not always the same exact procedure, although the essential idea is being able to multiply two monomials together. So we're going to start with that, and then we're going to expand that into multiplying binomials or monomials times um, trinomials and binomials, and then we'll start multiplying binomials together and binomials and trinomials, and that's enough of that. All right, so anyway, first things first, it's, it involves a very important property of exponents, which I'm going to uh, uh, remind you about, and uh, we're going to use the distributive property quite a bit as well. But first things first, binomial times, or excuse me, monomial times monomial. This is a monomial, remember a monomial is a, uh, a constant or a variable or the product of a constant and one or more variables. And that's what I have here. I have negative 3x squared and I have a positive 5x to the fourth that I'm multiplying together. You can tell it's multiplication because there's no symbol in between this monomial and this monomial and this one's in parentheses. Sometimes they'll even put parentheses around the other. But what you start out by doing is you multiply the coefficients, the numerical coefficients. So negative 3 times a positive 5 is a negative 15. That's where that comes from. And then you multiply the variables together. And if you have the same variable, you have to use this property of exponents that says that when you multiply and you have the same base, you add the exponents. Well, that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to add the 2 and the 4, and I'm going to get a 6, so I have x to the 6th. And there's my answer when I multiply those together. Now, I have to be able to do that when I am, <clears throat> excuse me, when I am uh, multiplying uh, different kinds of polynomials together because essentially it's going to be just many steps of monomial times monomial. Now remember about monomials, if you're adding monomials, they have to be like terms. They have to have the same variable and the same exponent for the variable. So 4x squared plus 5x squared is 9x squared. But when you are multiplying, okay, Remember, see here, the exponent stays the same, but when you're multiplying, you add the exponents, okay, and you multiply the coefficients, like I did in the example before. So now I'm going to bring in the distributive property, and I'm going to take a monomial, and I'm going to multiply it times some other type of polynomial, whether it has two terms, three terms, four terms, however many terms it might have. I have to be very careful with my signs, and I also have to be very careful with my variables here. So I am going to distribute, which means I'm taking this monomial out in front and I'm going to multiply it times each term in the trinomial that I have right next to it. So I have 2x to the fourth and now I'm going to start off by multiplying it times 3x to the second. Kind of like I did back here when I multiplied just those two guys together. So 2x to the fourth times 3x to the second would be 6, 2 times 3, and then x to the fourth times x to the second, I add the exponents, I get x to the sixth. Now, the next uh, term has a plus sign in front of it, so I'll put a plus sign here. 2x to the fourth, I start this all over again, 2x to the fourth now times 2x. I multiply the two twos, that's four, and I multiply the variables, this is like x to the first. So I have x to the fourth times x to the first, that's x to the fifth. Okay, and now I have a subtraction sign in front of my third term, so I'll put a minus sign here. 2x to the 4th times 5, uh, there, this doesn't have any variables, so I'm just going to multiply the constants. The 2 and the 5 is 10, 10x to the 4th, and there's my answer. Now, this is as far as my answer goes. It does not simplify because I do not have any like terms. So now I'm going to be a little bit more careful here on the next example because in the next example, you see that the monomial has a negative coefficient. And we know that when we multiply by a negative, the signs change. Now here, notice it was positive, then it was plus, then it was minus, it was positive, then it was plus, then it was minus in the answer, because I was multiplying through by a, a monomial that had a positive lead coefficient. Well, since I'm multiplying by something that has a negative lead coefficient, here I'm going to be changing some signs here. Here it's plus, minus, plus, or positive, minus, plus. Well, in my answer is going to be negative, plus, uh, minus. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute, keep track of those signs. All right, so a negative 3x to the fifth times a positive 2x to the sixth. Negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. x to the fifth times x to the third is x to the eighth. I add the exponents. 
Now, as I mentioned back here, if there's a minus sign in front of the middle term, you just bring the minus sign down. But I'm going to tell you, you can save yourself some aggravation because you're multiplying through by a negative. Think of this minus sign as a negative. Negative times negative is positive or plus 15, 5 times 3, x to the 7th. Add the exponents 5 and 2, 7. And then here now, I have a minus 3x to the 5th times plus 10. Think of the plus 10 as a positive 10. Negative times positive is negative. This is going to be negative 30. I'm going to write minus 30. And then the x to the 5th because this 10 doesn't have any variable. And there's my answer. It's not so bad. Okay. Everybody good there? Okay. If not, let's go back and uh, watch this part again here because this is key. We're going to expand our multiplication. So we really want to make sure that we feel comfortable multiplying the uh, monomial times the uh, you know, trinomial, some kind of polynomial. Now, as I mentioned before, the signs appear to change when you're multiplying through by a negative. That's what happened back here. So that's something that you'll want to check when you get done uh, multiplying to make sure that the signs line up because most of the mistakes that are made on this are not multiplying 3 times 2 or 3 times 5, but they're made with the signs. Sometimes with the exponents, but mostly with the signs. So be very careful here. All right, now we're going to multiply a binomial times a trinomial, which is about as messy as they get. And so there, you know, this has two terms. This has three terms. So when you multiply, each of these two terms is going to be multiplied times each of these three terms. So you're going to have six multiplications, six monomial times monomial. So there's two different ways to approach this. I actually like the second method a little bit better. But we're going to go through both of them all the same. One's vertical and one's horizontal. So here's an example. Here's a trinomial. Here's a binomial. If I'm going to work it vertically, notice here I put the trinomial on top and I put the binomial on the bottom. Just like when we did a multiplication. Like if I had 435 times 22, right? You don't put the 22 on top. You put the 435 on top. You put the 22 underneath the one with the less terms, the one with the less digits. It just makes it more convenient that way. Well, that's what I'm, I'm looking for here is as much convenience as possible. But then what you're going to do is just like here, you know, I would start with this two and multiply it times each one. I'm going to start with the rightmost term, which is a minus four. So it's like a negative four. And I'm going to multiply it times each term. Negative four times plus three is negative or minus 12. There it is right here, this part. Negative 4 times a minus 5x. Negative times negative is positive. That would be 20x. Notice plus 20x. The minus 4 times the 2x squared. That's a negative times a positive. That's going to be negative 8x squared. And notice the negative 8x squared right there. So when I did this multiplication here, I would have 10 carry 1. That would be a 7. And that would be an 8. And remember, when you got uh, uh, doing long multiplication like this, you would multiply by the next digit. You'd leave like a space here, because you want to like line up like, uh, uh, oh my goodness, place values. Excuse me, excuse me. So see here now I'm multiplying by the tens. So when I multiply the tens times the ones, I get tens. I would put it under here, underneath the tens spot. Well, when I multiply here now by x squared, I want to line up my like terms as well. Not my like place values, but my like terms. So I, here I have x squared times a plus 3. That's a plus 3x squared. I'm not going to put it underneath the 20x because those aren't like terms. I'm going to put it underneath the minus 8x squared because those are like terms. So I line those up there. And then I finish my multiplication. x squared times the minus 5x. That's minus 5x cubed. And then the x squared times the 2x squared. That would be 2x to the 4th. Now, I went ahead and continued bringing them to the left here because these are not like terms with any of these guys over here, and I like descending order. So now when I put my total bar down, I just, well, there's nothing to add to it, so I just bring the minus 12 down. I just bring the plus 20x down. But here I have like terms, a negative 8x squared and a positive 3x squared. Now, we're adding this time, so we don't add the exponents. We keep the exponent the same. I add the coefficients. A negative 8 and a positive 3 is a negative 5. So I have a minus 
or negative, minus 5x squared. And then the other ones I can just bring down because there was nothing combining with it. There was nothing stacked above it that I had to combine. There were no like terms. And I end up with this monster here of an answer, 2x to the fourth, minus 5x to the third, minus 5x squared, plus 20x, minus 12. This has got five terms to it. You have to be careful with this. Now, I told you that I actually like the horizontal method a little bit better because it's just more convenient when you have to multiply in the middle of an equation or in the middle of some kind of a problem that I'm solving. It's just a little bit more convenient to have the answer already written out horizontally. So when I do that, I use the same approach. I put the binomial out in front instead of underneath so that I can distribute by both terms of the binomial over the trinomial. See all the little arrows that I drew in? I'm going to take this x squared. I'm going to multiply it times the 2x squared. I'm going to multiply it times the minus 5x. I'm going to multiply it times the plus 3. Then I'm going to take the minus 4 and I'm going to multiply it through. So I'm kind of multiplying in a different order here, but I'm going to get all my terms. And when I get done, you watch. If you, I mean, you can look ahead. You already can see it. I'm going to get the same exact answer. So here we go. x squared times 2x squared. That would be 2, which is just like a 1, 2x to the, add the exponents, 2x to the 4th, right there. x squared times a minus 5x. That's going to be like a positive times a negative is negative 5x to the third. There it is right there. Then I'm going to multiply the x squared times the plus 3. That's going to be plus 3x squared. There it is right there. Now, I'm done multiplying by the x squared. It's been multiplied times all three terms. Now I take the 4. And because of the subtraction sign in front of the 4, I kind of treat it like a negative 4 here. Negative 4 times the 2x squared, that's going to be negative 8x squared. Notice the minus 8x squared that I wrote down. And then I take the minus 4 times the minus 5x. It's like a negative 4 times a negative 5x. That would be a positive 20x. So I put down plus 20x right there. And then I take the minus 4 times the plus 3. That's like a negative 4 times a positive 3 is negative 12. And I write down minus 12. You see the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms? Because I said there were going to be 6. I multiply each one of these two times each one of those three. That's six multiplications. But there's one extra step that I have to do here that's a little different than what I did above. What I did above where the like terms were lined up vertically. But here, they're not lined up vertically. I have it all in one horizontal row here. So you have to kind of look through to see where your like terms are. And here they are. This guy's a like term with this guy because they're both x squareds. So this comes down, this comes down, but I have to combine these. A plus 3x squared and a minus 8x squared is like a negative 3 and a, po and a, excuse me, a positive 3 and a negative 8. That's going to give me negative 5x squared. That's this guy right here. It goes right there. And then the rest, there were no other like terms, so they just come on down and notice how my answer is in descending order. And know how, notice how my answer is exactly the same. Now, I will tell you that when I first learned to do this, uh, my teacher, good old Mr. Halford, uh, taught me to do this vertically. But I, I'm telling you now, by the time I was in Algebra 2, I was finding it a lot more convenient to work it out horizontally. So you just need to practice it. If you like this better, that's fine. But there will be times when this will be just maybe a little more convenient, this method here. So now I have another example of a um, trinomial times a binomial. And I even threw some fractions in for good, uh, good measure here. So let me raise this up a little bit so you can be sure to see this. I'm going to put the binomial first. I'm going to write 1 3rd x squared minus 2 thirds x. And then I'm going to multiply it times the 9x to the third uh, minus the 12x squared plus 3. Hopefully you can see that a little bit better anyway. So now the 1 3rd x to the second is going to be distributed over the three terms. 1 third x to the second. Now when you multiply by a third, it's kind of like dividing by 3. So you can keep track of it that way. So 1 third x squared times 9x to the third. Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And x squared x to the third, add the exponents, x to the fifth. There's my first term. And then the 1 third x squared times a minus or a negative 12x. Okay, well the 1 third times the minus or negative 12, that's like dividing by 3. That'd be negative 4 or minus 4. But then you have an x squared times an x squared, that's an x to the fourth. 
uh, one third x squared times the plus three, that's a positive times a positive, it's gonna be a plus here. And of course a third of three, it's like dividing three by three, that's just one. I'm not gonna put a one down because there's an x squared there. I mean, you could put down one x squared if it helps you. You don't really need the one. Uh, but if it, if it helps you when you, you know, for practicing this, that's fine. And now I have multiplied one third x squared over all three terms here. So now I got to take the negative two thirds and I got to multiply it through. Now, when you uh, multiply by a fraction, remember I said it's kind of like you're dividing by the denominator. And I'm going to be dividing by the denominator, but I'm also going to be multiplying by the numerator. So I have a negative times a positive. That's negative. I'll put a minus sign down. Negative two thirds x times nine x to the third. Well, two thirds of nine, three goes into nine, three times the top, six. So it's gonna be six, and then this is x to the first times x to the third is x to the fourth. And I can already see some like terms here. Now I'm gonna multiply the negative two thirds times the middle term here, minus 12 x. Negative times negative is positive. Three goes into 12 four times times the top two. That'd be eight x and x. To the second, that would be x to the third. So this would be plus 8x to the third. The 8 from that, the x to the third from that. All right, and then the minus 2 thirds x times a plus 3, that's a negative times a positive, it's going to be minus. And then 3 goes into 3 one time, times 2 is 2, that'd be 2x. And I have only these two guys here that are like terms. That's kind of strange. And I like my answer to be in descending order, so I'll put the highest degree term first, that's three x to the fifth. And then a minus four and a minus six x to the fourth, that'd be a minus 10 x to the fourth. And then this is the next highest degree, so that'd be a plus eight x to the third. And then I have, <coughs> excuse me, I have a plus one x squared, oh, that'd be next, so I'm just gonna write plus x squared. I'm not gonna put the one in front of my final answer. I mean, the math nerds will see me. And then a minus two x. And that one is a peach. Now the good news is most of the time when you're multiplying uh, polynomials, it's a monomial uh, that's uh, either one or both of the factors. It's a monomial times a monomial or a monomial times a binomial or something like that. You don't get a lot of binomials times trinomials. Those are the ones that take a little bit more uh, time because there's six multiplications. And heaven forbid you had like a trinomial times a trinomial, that would be nine multiplications. Uh-oh, spoke too soon. Here is a trinomial times a trinomial. Three terms here times three terms here. I'm gonna have nine products. And I don't know if you can see this very well. I hope that you can read this. But what I have done is I have written them down individually. M to the third times 2M to the second. M to the third times plus four, uh, 4M. M to the third times plus three. And then I treated this like a negative 2M times each one. So negative 2M times the uh, 2M squared. There it is, I went ahead and just wrote it as a negative. Negative 2M times the 4M. Negative 2M times the plus three. And then I got to multiply by one, which is actually kind of nice. That's the ones here at the bottom. A plus one times two m squared, a plus one times four m, a plus one times plus three. And then I do all the little multiplications here. Of course, it's easy to multiply by one. And I put them down here and then I simplify by combining like terms. That one's a peach. Okay, look through that. And then I'll show you how you can do something very similar to that in the next one. In the next one, I have a binomial times a polynomial with four terms. It's the same principle. Two terms times four terms are gonna be eight products. But I'm gonna take them one at a time. I'm gonna distribute first by the first term of x. So this is x times two x to the third is two x to the fourth. It's nice when the coefficient's one, and the positive one. And then I have an x times a minus 3x squared, that's going to be minus 3x to the third. An x times a plus 5x is going to be a plus 5x squared. And an x times a minus 2 is going to be a minus 2x. And then I multiply through by the 3, the positive 3. Nice that it's a positive, so I keep track of my signs a little bit easier. Positive 3 times 2x to the third would be plus 6x to the third. I can see some like terms. 
A positive 3 times a minus 3x squared would be a minus 9x squared. A positive 3 times a plus 5x would be a plus 15x. And a positive 3 times a minus 2 is a minus 6. I, th I think of those minuses as negatives when I'm multiplying. Lots of like terms here and here, here and here, and then even here and here. So that's two equals. Don't forget your equal signs. 2x to the fourth, a minus 3 and a plus 6 is going to be a plus 3x to the third, combining like terms. A plus 5x squared and a minus 9x squared is a minus 4x squared. It's like a positive 5 and a negative 9, negative 4 when you combine. A minus 2x and a plus 15x, that's going to be a plus 13x. And then just the constant term remains, and there's my answer. Now, if you're looking at this and you're starting to get a little weirded out, don't. It just takes practice. You'll get good at it if you practice it. If you don't practice it, then you might struggle a little bit with it. Okay. Now, the next example is when we multiply two binomials together. I know that's kind of a step down because here we was a binomial times a polynomial with four terms or two trinomials before that. So it seems like it's kind of anticlimactic to drop down to a binomial times a binomial. But I'm still going to go ahead and go through this because this might be the most common type of multiplication of polynomials. So it says, we look at a simpler form of this when we multiply two binomials. Now, since this has two terms and this has two terms, you're going to have four products. Okay? So I'm going to distribute twice, just like I did before. You can see I've got the little arrows here. I'm going to multiply the first term, 2x, times the first term here, x. So 2x times x, right there it is. And then I'm going to multiply this term here on the left and this term here on the right. I'm distributing, right? So I have a 2x and I have a plus 5, so I multiply the 2x and the positive 5. And I'm done with the first term here. Now I multiply through by the plus 3, as you can see here. Plus 3 times x, these two terms that are kind of in the middle here, that's going to be a 3 times an x, and then a plus 3 times the plus 5, that's the 3 times the 5. Now you may notice here, that I went ahead and I wrote first terms, outer terms, inner terms, last terms underneath each one of these four products. Okay, because these are the first terms in the two binomials. The 2x and the x, is the 2x is the first term in the left binomial, the x is the first term in the right binomial. So that's why we sometimes think of these as the first terms, or just an f for first. And then I multiply this term here, this 2x times this plus 5, this 2x is kind of on the left, and this 5 is kind of on the right. They're kind of like the outside rather than the middle or the inside here. So that's why I've written underneath this product the outer terms, or just an O for outer. <coughs> the middle terms here, the kind of the inside terms here, inner terms, that was the 3. 3 and the x. So I multiplied those two together, and I wrote underneath it inner terms because... They're kind of in the inside, in the middle there. And the i here is what I wrote down, capital I. And then I multiplied the plus 3 and the plus 5. Now, these aren't the first terms of the binomials. These are the last terms of the, of the binomials. 3 is the last term of this binomial. 5 is the last term of this binomial. So I wrote last terms underneath it, and I put a capital L there. And I actually multiplied them together, and I got this, and then I combined like terms, and I got this. And you probably have seen the word FOIL. Uh, it's an acronym, first, outer, inner, last. It's a way to remember how to do a binomial times a binomial, how to do the four products. You multiply the first terms, you multiply the outer terms, the inner terms, and the last terms. Now, when I was learning this, again, good old Mr. Halper, he didn't call it FOIL. He just said you're distributing twice, and that's really what it is. The only reason they call it FOIL is to give you an easy, try to give you an easy way to remember it. This is a mnemonic. So, here we go. This pattern, the acronym FOIL, F stands for multiplying the first, O stands for multipl multiplying the outer, I stands for multiplying the inner, and L stands for multiplying the last. So, as you can see here, 2x plus 3 times x plus 5. Now, this is the problem that I just did. I multiplied the first terms together, right? The 2x and the x. I multiplied uh, the outside terms together, the 2x and the 5. 
I multiply the inside terms together, the, the x and the, the, excuse me, the three and the x, and then I multiplied the last terms together, the three and the five, and I went ahead and did this. As I said, good old Mr. Halford there, he just called it the FOIL, he didn't call it the FOIL method, he just said we're discriminating twice. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh-oh, I covered up my problems here. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Here for A, I have, I can't even read it. It looks like X minus two bleeding through the paper a little bit. Here, hang on a second. I better check my paper here, X minus six. You might have been able to see that better than I did. And then for B, I covered up two problems. I have five X minus six. And I have two X plus, or two X or two Y? I have two Y plus three. All right, here we go. So we're gonna use the FOIL method here on both of these examples. In fact, it's gonna be involved in all four of these examples here. All right, first things first. This X times this X, that's the first term, so that's X squared. This X times this minus six or negative six is a negative six X or a minus six X. That's the first, that's the last. Then I multiply the inside terms or the inner terms, minus two, it's like a negative two times X is negative two X or minus two X. And then the negative two times the negative six, which is you know, minus two minus six, negative two times negative six, that would be a positive or plus 12. And what happens most times when you do FOIL, the outer and the inner products typically are like terms. Not every time, it's, it's not gonna be in the next one but they're typically like terms and you can be combined so you can simplify. Don't forget your equal sign. So that's gonna be a minus six and a minus two, that's minus eight X plus 12. I'm hoping this looks really familiar to you. So first, five X times two Y, 10 X Y, they're not the same variable, so you can't use an exponent. Five X times a plus three, that would be plus 15 X minus six times a two y, that's a negative six times a positive two y is negative 12 y, that's my inside ones. And then my last ones here, a minus six times a plus three, negative six times a positive three is negative or minus 18. And in this case, as you can see, none of these are like terms. This whole thing here turns out to be the answer. All right, now here's one with two variables, but they're the same two variables in both binomials. So you might get some like terms here. So let's multiply the first terms together. Oops. Uh, 3p times 4p is 12p to the second. 3p times minus q, that's a positive 3p and a negative 1q, that's gonna be a negative or minus 3pq. That's weird. And then I have these two guys in the middle, minus 5q times a positive 4p, that's like a negative 5 times a positive 4, that's negative 20. Q times P, but since I want, you know, multiplication is commutative, I'm going to write minus 20 PQ. I like alphabetical order with my variables. And then I have a minus 5Q times a minus 1Q, it's a negative 5 times a negative 1, that's a positive or a plus 5Q to the second power. All right, so now I have like terms, I have PQ terms, so I can simplify this. A minus 3pq and a minus 20pq uh, is a minus 23pq. And then a plus 5q squared on the end. There's my answer. All right, I have one more example here. And this one is a little different um, because I have an extra uh, thing that I'm multiplying by. I have two binomials, which looks like foil, but then I have a monomial out in front. And uh, when you multiply three things together, you can multiply them in any way you want. You can multiply the first two, then times the last one, or you can multiply the last two times the first one, or the first and the last one times the middle one. I, I would suggest you multiply the binomials together first when one of the factors is a monomial, save it to the end. So the five X squared isn't going anywhere. I am gonna multiply all this together that I underlined. So FOIL, three uh, X times X is three X squared. 3x times minus 5 is minus 15x. 3x times, uh, oh, excuse me, plus 1 times x is plus 1x, so just plus x. And plus 1 times minus 5, that's a minus 5. Now, before I distribute, I am going to do one extra step. I'm going to simplify here, because it does combine. So I get 3x squared, looks like minus 14x. That's a, 
minus 15 and a plus 1, and then a minus 5. And now, back to the beginning of the lesson, I'm going to multiply by 5x squared. 5x squared through this, just like we did at the beginning of the lesson, monomial times a trinomial, that would be 15x to the fourth, we're multiplying here, 5x squared, so we add the exponents, minus here 5x squared times a minus 14x, that's going to be a minus 70, because 5 times 14 is 70, x squared times x to the first is x to the third, 5x squared times a minus or negative 5, that would be a negative or minus 25x squared, and this guy right here is my, uh, my final answer here. Now, I want you to uh, pay attention to what we're looking at here. We're multiplying binomials and getting mostly trinomials, even here, trinomial. And uh, it's not going to be much longer. Uh, when we get into the second semester, one of the first things that we look at is just the reverse. We start with a trinomial, and we try to figure out a way to write it as a product of two binomials. And you may remember that as factoring. So we're going to have a chapter on factoring. The better you understand FOIL, the easier it is to reverse the process. And we'll get to that soon. In fact, we have some more products to do uh, with binomials, but we're going, to, uh, we're going to save that for the next section. And we're going to uh, lump them together as some of the special products that you guys are going to have uh, a chance to practice and to hopefully uh, get really used to, because you're going to see it again, as I mentioned, when we get to factoring. So practice, practice, practice.